and welcome to another amazing session at DCH. I have here Monica Cochran with me. Monica, say hi. Hi, Victoria. And can you tell parents who may have missed your, your previous session a little bit about yourself and your background before we get into your awesome talk about strength-based resilience? I sure will. First of all, I do want to thank you again for having and putting this on for parents. I know that some of the parents are new to homeschooling. Some have been doing it for a long time, but these are very unprecedented times right now. So, um, and I think uh, they're challenging for everyone. So I do wanna thank you for putting this on and, and for inviting me too. But as I, Victoria, when she, we met at another conference, I've been an educator for over 40 years now. And um, I've been in alternative education for most of it. And um, so I've home educated two of my children. Uh, I've worked with home learning families and in alternative schools. Um, home learning families for about the last 20 years and a number of different uh, strength, you know, different organizations. And then two years ago, um, I decided to kind of cut back a little bit and have a private practice. So that's my learning without borders. So I now I'm able to do a lot of different things. And I do work with kids all over the world uh, online. I do personalized learning and educational therapy for kids. Uh, a lot of my the kids I work with are kind of quirky learners. You know, they have highs and lows. I do a special kind of play therapy called um, DIR, which is developmental individual differences and relationship based um, coaching and play therapy for kids. I do parent education and coaching. And I also work with kids with transition planning. And just very recently, in the last couple of years, I started doing a sound therapy because we've just seen so many of the kids um, have sound sensitivities and it's called safe and sound protocol. And it kind of fits in with this resilience uh, piece. Here. So it's on my website if you want to check that out too. That's awesome. I also just want to say that like it's it's awesome that you a you sound there because that's pretty new as far as like a type of therapy. Yeah, it's exciting. And, and like I said, I've been able to do it. It's been quite quite an amazing change for a lot of kids and adults. I've actually worked with some adult schools so too who have hypercusis. So, but today what we want to do is we want to explore what the effects of stress and trauma we call it the big T and the little T have on learning and I think we're all in that space right now because of COVID-19 and yes. the neuroscience of what's happening between our mind and our body because it is a two-way um, conversation and then we want to how to look for strengths in ourselves and others to develop resourcefulness and resilience right because right now this is a challenging time and then some I call it concrete strategies just to stay sane uh, because this, this is a crazy time. First off, I think we're all pretty aware of stress. I mean, this is not new. Hans Selye talked about stress many, many years ago. And actually, we need some stress in our lives just to continue to grow and, and develop. Yes. However, it's the type of stress we're having right now that's so different, right? And so I want to kind of move into that a little bit because I said we've all had stress. However, this is more prolonged and it's different because it's a different pattern of stress. And this is from um, Bruce Perry's work, and he's done a lot of work in trauma. And I was at a, um, a great webinar with him, and he offered to share it, he said, because it's important for people to know this. We have patterns of strength, stress. Sometimes when stress is predictable, it's moderate, and we feel like we have some control, it helps us develop our window of tolerance for it. And it actually helps us develop resilience. However, when the stress is unpredictable, it's extreme, it's prolonged, we have a lot of uncertainty. It actually activates sensitization, right? We get more sensitized to it and we almost have triggers. Sometimes we don't even know what those are and that increases our vulnerability. And that's kind of right now for a lot of people where we're at. So we're, we're looking to see if we can make some shifts here so that we can all cope better. I actually also want to point out, because I mean, obviously there's a lot going on in the world right now, but of course this is going to be up for people to see long after, you know, everything has gone back to, you know, normal, quote unquote. And I, I want to bring up, there's other examples of unpredictable stress. Yeah. Um, I yeah. was, you know, we met at a conference down in San Diego and I go to conferences right. all over the place. And this past year, actually, this past year, uh, I drove up to, sorry, last year, I drove up to San, San Jose. Yeah. I'm not good with directions. I, I drove five hours away <laughs> and, and uh, I was getting there for a day ahead of time. And I was on this two lane highway that I've never driven on my entire life. And I blew a tire 
Um, I actually oh, didn't blow a tire. I slowly leaked the tire, and it took me a while to figure it out. So by the time I figured it out, the tire was deformed, and I couldn't yeah. drive on it anymore. Right. And it was around like 10 or 11 o'clock at oh, night, yeah. up going up toward the, the Bay Area. And so it was foggy, and it was oh, really dark, yeah. and I was and I was alone. And for the record, and this is not a moment of pride, but it's just an applicable thing. I've never had to change a tire. So, right. I, I mean, which I didn't that night either. I get, I have roadside assistance <laughs> for that. But I was like, I, the signal was choppy and it was suddenly I was very alone in a very dark place. And there are things that hap that can still happen, you know, beyond what's going on in the world right now that are very unpredictable, extreme uh, types of stress. And you're, you know, Still have to deal with it. <laughs> yep. And and we know that there's there are things happen, losses and, and all different yes. kinds of things happen in, in our lives. But it, it is it is a particularly challenging time because generally it's a stressor in one part of our lives, mm -hmm. right? And now we have them in our home, right? We have it in our community, and we also have it in the environment. So now it's we're everywhere. Right it's pervasive. It's everywhere. So it's it's a very it's at that kind of time right now where we're not we're having to look for a little almost islands of safety you know we're gonna ha we're having to create them our, I call it our little bubbles of safety so this is kind of a, a different time and then it kind of exacerbates everything so this is a concept that I learned about from Dr. Stephen Porges who had uh, coined this term uh, to help explain what happens in our bodies um, what happens subconsciously we have a danger detection system and that's what our nervous system uses to evaluate risk outside of our awareness so this is when you're getting the feeling in your stomach right you're those things are happening you're not even quite aware of it yet so it's kind of like our tsa agent and it's working really hard to keep us safe and right now it's like that hyper vigilance that we have, and we're all kind of. It's like when we go someplace new, right? We're always look. Now we're like that. Now we, you know, we're looking around at who has a mask on, who doesn't have a mask on, how close mm -hmm. are they, right? And so, t what some what were some typical situations now are feeling more threatening than they used to. So our neuroception can go offline a little bit. And so when that happens, when our neuroception gets triggered, and by the way, you don't need to look at all those little words. It was primarily for the pictures, right? When our neuroception gets triggered and we go into what we call fight and flight, those red parts of the brain light up. And that's our limbic system down here, and it's our and our brain stem, right? And when these, these this is a real important part because this is what keeps us breathing, and this gives us our emotions and gives that an adrenaline when we need it. But it also means that usually our prefrontal cortex goes offline, all right? And that's our thinking part up here, this green one over here. That's where we can plan. Our little, this little system, they're not very good planners, okay? That's a good reactor, but this one's the, our planning part. And this is the part that's right behind, goes off the top of our cortex, and mm -hmm. especially the part right in the front. And so that's a really important piece here because we can't, if we can't calm our limbic system and our body down, then we can't access our thinking skills. Yeah. So we're functioning basically on a reactive basis instead of being able oh, to yeah. look at a larger plan and organize our lives and our thoughts, mm -hmm. which you need to relax to be able to have a clear mind to do. Yeah. And this is what I use when I talk with kids about this, because I tell them, you know, your body is connected to your brain and there's this one big nerve, it's called the vagus nerve and it goes two ways. And we usually think that it's our brain giving our body all of the signals, but actually this particular, we're getting like a lot of our signals from our body to our brain. And when we're feeling good, then we have what we call social engagement. We're, we're happy, we're com we have compassion, we're mindful, we're curious, we're enjoying being with other people. And then sometimes we go into this red section that's kind of that fight and flight, right? And we all do it. You see this little curvy line here? We all go in and out of it all the time, and that's good. But sometimes when we have a lot of it, we go up, all the way up, and sometimes we, we go all the way into freezing and shutting down right? And then we have to spend all that energy deactivating. So what we would like to do is kind of, we call it flatten the, we call it flatten the curve in COVID. We want to flatten the curve in how we handle the stresses in our lives, how we're handling the, these different feelings that were coming up, these different responses. 
So what we want to do is we want to go into a little bit of fight and flight, and then we want to come back into social engagement, a little bit in, a little bit out. And that takes us becoming a little bit more aware of when we're doing, when that's happening, right? And then using where we have some strategies to help us go down. But I think this one, I have a, a grown up version, but this one's still <laughs> my favorite one because the grown up version has lots more words, but I think the pictures kind of tell the story, right? So we want to experience the stress. We want to recover. And then if we can, we want to put a little pause in so that we can, our bodies can rest, right? We call it rest and digest and get ready for the next experience. So when we keep going up, 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 we're not giving our body a chance to do that. So there's a couple of ways that we can work on this. So when we give ourselves that chance to rest, we're going back into social engagement. Now, sometimes we go to sleep too, and that's always good too. Sleep helps our body rest and rejuvenate. So getting good sleep, we talked about some of these other things, getting good sleep, drinking water, all those kind of things, those are kind of givens, right? And sleep especially is very restorative. And it might be interesting to note that I actually spoke to a sleep professional a couple days ago, actually. And what's interesting is that sometimes you may not realize that you're experiencing the stress and you, you are definitely going to, even if you think you're handling it really well, you're still <laughs> going to have that experience. And it may, it often comes out when we're trying to physically rest, where you're feeling anxious, yeah. you can't sleep, you're just not being able to yeah. fall asleep. You know, I've started implementing a tactic, which is to consciously think about relaxing those muscles yeah. because a lot of times we're tense and we don't even realize it and we're experiencing that stress and it'll often show up in our sleep and body scans are a really effective way you know where you really tense it and then you relax it and you tense and you relax so that you get a chance to have that experience so these are some of the bottom-up steps these are going to go from our body up all right and those are the ones when you're in the moment you know this is the in the moment kind of things you're feeling the anger coming, you're feeling this. And for adults, you know, especially right now, that uh, what the flight attendant says, put your own oxygen mask on first. Absolutely. Before we try and calm a child down, help a situation, breathe in and then take a long exhale because really the exhale that helps us reset. So that's important. Check in. How do your hands feel? Your feet, you have clammy, you know, are your hands cold? Uh, do you have clammy fingers? Is your heart racing? What's happening? Um, grounding ourselves physiologically, breathing out, putting a hand over our heart, walking, even smelling a flower can help us get grounded. Um, rhythmic music is really important, especially to the beat of 60 to 80 minutes, 60 to 80 beats per minute. I'll try that. Um, activities automatically that have like using wind instruments, singing, right? Exercising, dragon breaths for kids. They love those. Humming is a great one. And anything that has a rhythmic movement, dancing, climbing, rocking, um, these, they have a special name for them, but it's called somatis, <laughs> I always have a hard time with this, somatosensory. And basically that goes way back. That was our initial first safety features from when we were in utero, right? So when we see kids that are rocking and they want this rhythmic dancing, that's why it takes us back to that very safe time. Um, as we move a little bit further up, being able to label your emotion, not deep processing, but just acknowledging, oh, I'm, I'm feeling irritated, I'm feeling angry. And when we can have some more differentiation and discernment, you know, we can go from irritation to annoyance, you know, we don't have to go from zero to 10, like in, you know, really fast, that can help. Mm -hmm. Loving touches, even hugging ourselves, right? Loving compassion, smiling is huge. You know, when we can have a smile that makes our eyes crinkle, right? You know, that that's a real smile. So we call these cues of safety. These are all the cues of safety that our bodies need. And I just want to point out, because I actually see this happen even in a lot of adults. I know uh, recently I've spoken to a few adults where they're like, I'm just, I'm just angry about what's going on. And yeah. we usually, we do have the, you know, the five main um, yeah. emotions. But, and you can even Google it. There's actually, um, I, I have a copy of this somewhere. It's an emotional wheel where it's like, yeah. okay, here's your main five, uh -huh. you, you know, go. and then, and, but, and we as adults, and even some adults have difficulty with this, we were like, we're, we're angry. We, we know that we're irritated or we're anxious, but children don't. They're just like, they're, they're scared and they're angry and they don't, they don't know the deeper levels of the, beyond those first five. They don't know the, the combination. So they can't come and tell you 
hey, I'm anxious because I'm, yeah. you know, because I'm, I'm a little scared, I'm worried. But in, I think that's important for parents to remember because we tend to <laughs> think everyone works the way we do. <laughs> and, and for kids, it usually comes out in whining. It comes out in, you know, hi- some hyperactivity. It comes, it comes out because they're not yet even able to put that pause between mm-hmm. what's going on and their behavior, their actions. So that's really cute. Oops. That was me. Sorry. That's you. Okay. So, so this is why we want to talk a little bit about strengths because when we can get our bodies calmed down, then we can activate some top-down strategies. And the ones that are going to work, so I know right now I'm being flooded with all different kinds of ideas on what I can do to manage this. But when I use my strengths and I look at the kids that I'm working with and we use their strengths, then we're just much more in touch with what's going on. So strengths are what we're born with, right? They're the way we see the world. And they're used in a lot of different areas of our lives. So when I look at it, the kind of the, the formula is talent plus time plus practice equals strength. So that's an important thing. That's the way we're going to be able to use our upper thinking. And then when we know our strengths, then we can use some of these top down strategies that everybody's talking about. You want to use the ones that match your strengths. Okay. So when we know our strengths, then we can begin to figure out which of these top-down strategies are going to work. And we want to use the ones that work with our strengths. Trying to borrow what works for someone else usually doesn't work very well. So once we know what our strengths are and we know what our children's strengths are, then we can think about their thinking. Then we can begin to challenge our anxious thoughts. We can choose how we're going to interact with news and social media. We can begin to plan our day and proactively create some pauses. We can do dinners. Um, We can have zoom calls and have dinner with each other right i was gonna say oh virtual dinners <laughs> virtual dinners are things. I, yeah, I had a virtual tea time the other day actually so you can I you did. can still do that you know i did i had one too just the other yesterday as a matter of fact and then the other thing once you're aware of your strengths you can now partner with someone who has strengths you don't have and that then you're really you know collaborating you can make plans for the future because this too will pass right and there is hope and we want to make sure we're giving that message to our children. And then we can tend and befriend, right? That's, we can tend, we could be a child, it could be another adult, because sometimes reaching out to help other people, we feel better. And then we can just be intentional and, and make some time during this pause for an interest. You might want to just develop a little bit, a hobby. Encourage your kids to do things they might not have had time before, right? They're, now they've got some downtime. Uh, and then you can schedule, whether it's meditation, your exercise, Right. Now's the time when you can begin to think about your thinking and, and actually mark it out in your schedule so that you don't have to. Because we are talking about people getting decision fatigue, that if we have no routine, yes. that's why we're recommending creating, because you cannot be making decisions all day long. You're going to get tired. And, the, you know, they're concerned about this in education and healthcare that we're, you know, without those routines, without those rhythms in our lives, then we have to make too many decisions every day and that's that's just too hard i'm so, very sure uh, there are some families who relate where someone's like i i don't even care what's for dinner it could be a bowl of cereal or a piece of toast i i i'm just done right and, and that's when we're already back right now we have to use a bottom-up strategy because i'm yep. already down right i've got to use a bottom because i can't even think now i personally this has made it my life, I plan out more meals now than we did before because I'm, we're not going to the store and picking up one or two things anymore. So we are planning, but I'm not doing that when I'm frazzled mm-hmm. or at the end of the day. Like somebody told me they, they took them two hours to put an online order in, but they started at 930 at night. Whoa, you know. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you know, that's I can't, not the time to do that. I can't handle that much frustration that late in the day. And it's perfectly fine to tell your kids, you know, I, I need some downtime here. You know, we, we did a lot of things today, you know, yeah, you don't need to go to sleep, but I, I need some, some space here. So, but we can do that much better when we're taking care of ourselves. So I look at my own strengths and I've done this a number of times. I've used a lot of different systems, but I did use the Gallup one about, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I've done it again and they might move a little bit, but they pretty much come up like this. So mine are input. I love input. I love learning new things. I'm a learner. I enjoy the process of learning as much as what I learn. Okay. I love playing with ideas. I love connecting ideas. I like seeing if they can fit together. I love to connect with people. 
I love to individualize things to figure out how can it work for that person. So obviously you can see from my work, I'm able to use my strength. But when I think in terms now of the situation that we're in, then I have to look again and I have to look at that list and see what fits for me, right? Telling me I should limit myself to just a little bit of news. Hmm, I'm kind of a learner and that's how I process and that's how I do things. So I think those are some really important things to know. And I think somebody, one of my families was just sending me a video, which I've been asking them to do what's happening at home so I can help them learn better. I apologize. So these are my strengths. So when I look at lists that are coming and I'm getting them every day from different organizations, I look at them and I certainly agree with getting good sleep and hydrating those bottom up. But for the top down ones, me borrowing somebody else's strategy that mm -hmm. doesn't match my strength doesn't usually work. So... So those yeah. were mine, and I was using me there. So, so lots of, again, I think so there's lots of... just a question here. You said, on the other note, you said uh, Strength Finder. Is this what you were talking about when you are saying Gallup? You, you, because it noted yeah. Strength Finder, you, you did mention Gallup. So is that this book that you were referencing? This, this, is, this is one of... They have uh, many, many books. Okay, okay. They've, they've, been, they've been doing this for 40 years. Uh, when I'm working with parents, I like to recommend this one particularly, um, just so that, you know, when you, you can wrap your head around... It's because it does, it is a shift, it's a paradigm shift. We have been coached to, we got to fix our kids and you've got to fix these learning problems, right? We have to take care. And you know, this is a, a big paradigm shift. It's not that you're not going to work on things that they're not good yeah. at, but we're going to, we're going to shift that paradigm to what they are good at and, and recruit those into helping them with things they're not. And again, because I've spent so much time working with what I call quirky learners and they have high points and low points. It's, it's essential to recruit their strengths. Oh, you know, yeah, because you have to give them the confidence to think that they, you know, they can improve on things that they want to work on uh, by building on their strengths and, and, and instill that right. into them. So these, uh, the reason I mentioned these, the, the Gallup tools are um, cost money, right? You know, um, the core value index, they have a free trial. Values and actions, BIA or character strengths do, and they have a free a freemium, you know, and then they have a premium. So it all depends on how deep you want to go. But you don't even have to use a tool if you don't want to. Again, you can just begin looking at your children and looking to see their strengths. So as much as I love using their tools and things, it's not essential to be able to do this work. So I'm, if anybody's curious and wants to dig deeper into these, I do do workshops on this. I'm going to be doing one with a colleague this weekend, and it's four Saturdays. Um, between now and the middle of May. And then also, way before COVID happened, um, we had planned to do a, a workshop on, we call it the big T's and the little T's. You know, the trauma, what's happened to this child? So we're looking at the whys behind what their learning issues are and the whys behind sometimes behavior in, you know, in group settings or at home. So that was on our club. But now that's, I think there's going to be a lot more people needing to know what, what can we do? You know, how can we take a look? Because behavior is usually just the tip of the iceberg. You know, mm -hmm. you have to find it's usually caused down. by something. Yeah, there's factors always. So those are things that are coming. If you're curious, um, I have someone says, well, you didn't give me anything today that I could. I have um, a blog post I just did, and I did a Facebook on some of these strategies. I, it's called How to Stay Safe, How to Stay Safe, Healthy, and Sane. <laughs> so, and the sane part is the one I had lots of things. Um, you're welcome to check out my website or email me, and I'm happy to send you any of the resources that are here. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you so much, Monica. And like she said, you know, we, you know, we want to bring attention to these thoughts and to the, these habits and, and behaviors. And for a lot of the, you know, beyond the suggestions that she already gave in, in going from bottom up and top down, uh, like you said, it's on her Facebook or, or her website where you can get more sp specific to do's. Uh, and you can just contact her as well. So I do want to appreciate you for being such an amazing resource for our parents. And I actually, I wish so many people I knew who, who don't have kids would be listening to this too. So well, thank <laughs> you so much. So important. Thank you so much. You guys will see you again online.